but you did, you did touch briefly on temperature coefficient earlier. Uh, why is that important, uh, maybe particularly for folks that live in areas with extreme high temperatures? For those that aren't as familiar with that terminology, can you explain a little bit what is heterojunction technology? Now, George, there's another thing that I know sets REC apart from some of its competition, which is how the panel is mechanically reinforced. So what I like to say is the best warranty out there is one that you don't have to use. The smarter way to go solar. Hi, everyone. Joe Ordia here for Solar Surge. And today we're coming to you from RE+, Plus, which is the International Solar Conference here in Anaheim, California. And this morning I'm joined by George McLennan from REC, and we're looking at the new REC Alpha Pure RX solar module. So George, thanks for joining us, and uh, looking forward to learn more about this year's module. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, the opportunity to talk about this. Um, the, this is the Alpha Pure RX. It is the continuation of the REC Alpha series. Um, this is our newest, latest and greatest product. Uh, coming in at 450 to 470 watts. The good, one of the good parts about this product, it continues on the Alpha HJT platform. What we are using is the G12 cells. So we've migrated, uh, we've migrated from the M6 cells to the G12. So that's a larger 210 millimeter cell. Um, it is still the HJT platform, which gives you all the benefits of the uh, expanded light spectrum. Um, it has got a very good uh, temperature coefficient. It's got one of the best temperature coefficients uh, in the industry, uh, still with the REC Pro Trust warranty. So we're really excited about this product. It's moving really well into the residential space. Excellent. Well, I know that the heterojunction technology is one of the differentiators that REC usually brings to the table with this module. For those that aren't as familiar with that terminology, can you explain a little bit what is heterojunction technology? Yeah, absolutely. Happy to talk about that. Um, RC, REC is one of the leaders in heterojunction. We are the first to truly commercialize heterojunction technology. This goes all the way back to the early 90s or late 90s when Sanyo uh, developed the HIT technology. Um, they, it's basically the same thing. It is a thin film, it is a uh, N mono cell with a thin film layer on the top, amorphous silicon layer on the top and the bottom. What that does is increases your spectral response, gives you a greater, a broader spectrum of photons hitting that PN junction. Um, it also drops your temperature coefficient down. So as your temperature goes up, uh, the, uh, the temperature, the watt loss is not as much. So it's a really good product. Now, as I mentioned, Sanyo was doing this in the late 90s. So what is different? We just said, so if you remember the Sanyo and then Panasonic product, they were um, a bit more, not as cost effective, we'll say. Um, they were a more expensive product. REC figured out a way to do the heterojunction and the uh, interconnection uh, at a much more effective and efficient way, bringing that to the broader market. So this is a premium product without the premium price. So that's one of the things. REC also has brought the advanced interconnect to this, where it's at a zero gap product. So what that does is decreases the amount of space between the cells, more cells on the front side, less open space on the front side means a better panel efficiency. Excellent, excellent. So I, I remember back in the day, we used to have options. You could either buy silicon, you know, mono, uh, mono crystalline or polycrystalline silicon modules, or you could buy thin film modules. If my understanding is correct, heterojunction basically taking both of those technologies, using them together to produce Absolutely. a higher, a higher that's, performing that's uh, exactly solar That's exactly right, yes. So you're getting the benefits of both. It's not a 100% uh, thin film, but uh, it is taking advantage of the amorphous silicon. So. Absolutely, it's got kind of combining the best of both worlds. Excellent. So you have the N mono, you have the baseline performance of the N mono, and then you're bringing up the energy yield with uh, amorphous silicon, basically sandwiched on either side. Great. And you're getting a higher, reli higher reliability product too, because now it's stronger. Now you also talked about, and I, and I will have some questions about the strength too, because I understand there's some things that you've done to me mechanically reinforce the module. Indeed. But you did, you did touch briefly on temperature coefficient earlier, uh, why is that important, uh, maybe particularly for folks that live in areas with extreme high temperatures? Yeah, indeed, that's a, a very good, 
very good question. A lot of people don't understand how important the temperature coefficient is. So all solar panels, all crystalline solar panels have what's called a negative temperature coefficient. So as the temperature rises above standard temperature, so which is 25 degrees C, 77 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, as the temperature, so the panel is flash tested at 25 degrees C, 1000 watts per meter squared. So that's when you're gonna get your exactly 420 watts. As temperature goes up from that, from 77 degrees, your, those watts are going to decrease. So that's what's called a negative temperature coefficient of peak power. So your watts are going to decrease. So as you get up to, and that decreases at 0.24% per degree. So for every four degrees you go up, you lose 1% of power. So you can see pretty quickly, you're gonna be dropping you know, eight, 10, 12, maybe 20 watts. So when you get up to 120 degrees on a rooftop, which happens quite frequently. All the time, yeah. Your panel is going to be, this is going to be operating at, all panels are going to be dropping down. Ours drop down less is what the best way to think of it is. But that is why temperature coefficient is so important. Now, if you look at some of the competition out there, they're up at uh, 0.36, you know, 0.40 temperature coefficients, which means they're dropping down in power a lot more than the REC product. And what that does, that affects energy yield. What the customer is buying, I know it says kilowatts on their invoice, what they're really buying is kilowatt hours. And this provides more kilowatt hours and reduces, again, reducing your electric bill. That's what we're all trying to do. Yep, no, that's, that's a great answer, George. Because again, you know, a lot of times you might look at the nameplate rating on the panel and say, oh, 470 watt panel. Well, in reality, that's under perfect ideal conditions, right, when the, when the panels are tested. But when it's extreme high temperatures on the rooftop in the middle of the summertime, the panels are not going to be producing at peak potential. And that's why we want this number to be as low as possible. Uh, RECs, I believe, is for the residential solar panels, we cover the lowest in terms of temperature coefficient. It is. Which means the panel is going to perform the best when it has to operate in those extreme high heat conditions. Now, George, there's another thing that I know sets REC apart from some of its competition, which is how the panel is mechanically reinforced. So if you don't mind, let's turn this module around and take a look at the construction on the backside. You've hit on a very good, very good piece of technology, and sometimes this gets lost in the translation, but thank you for bringing that up. REC has got one of the strongest panels um, in the industry. Um, this is rated at 7,000 pascals in positive and load and can actually go up to minus 5,400 pascals for high wind load environments. And that's due to the cross support bars <clears throat> that are attached along the back side. Now the REC frame, which uh, some people like or don't like, but we have a 30 millimeter frame um, for which allows us to put more panels on a, on a pallet. But because we have a thinner frame, we moved to these back support bars. Uh, it's called the 2S platform. Um, this is very effective in increasing uh, positive and negative loading, uh, giving you a stronger and stiffer panel. And those are the things that you want. Even if you don't live in a high snow load area, it's very important to have a strong panel because stronger is always going to be better. Sure. Sure. Uh, and this is important, folks. I mean, I, I grew up in, in upstate New York. You know, it, it was not uncommon to have mul multiple feet of snow, uh, multiple feet of snow on your, on your roof, maybe for several days at a time before it melts off. And so you want to make sure that the, the panel is mechanically strong enough to handle that. Um, or maybe some of you are watching from places like Florida or Texas where there's a, there's a hurricane threat. And so you're going to have extreme high winds under certain conditions. You want to make sure the panel can mechanically stand up to all of that, all of that stress. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, so. a, that's a very good point. So, so George, what else should the audience know about the new REC Alpha Pure RX? Obviously, you know, higher power output, higher module efficiency. These are some of the things that we typically associate with REC and why we've ranked REC's Alpha series so high on our, our solar panel lineups in the past. What else sets your product apart from the competition? So that's a, I appreciate the opportunity to discuss that. One of the things that kind of gets lost in the mix often is panel reliability. So this is again, based on the Alpha Series technology that REC has been manufacturing. We are industry leader in the HJT and this type of uh, manufacturing. Our current limit, our, our current 
claims rate that is coming out of this. So the panel failures in the field, we're seeing about 65 parts per million failure rate, which is about one module for every 14,000 modules. So that's a very, very low claims rate. And this is not just for the Alpha series, this is for all of our solar panels since 2010 in all environments. So it's a very highly reliable, um, well understood uh, assembly process. So this is something, and you hear a lot of discussions of, oh, we don't really care about the failure rates because the warranty is gonna cover that. It doesn't matter how good your warranty is, I don't really want someone climbing up on my rooftop even if they're paying to, to do it. I don't want them doing that. So what I like to say is the best warranty out there is one that you don't have to use. And that's what REC provides. It's gonna throw it up there, let it run, you know, we'll talk to you in 25 years. Sounds good. Now you touched on warranty, so I do have to ask you a follow-up question for that because you know one of the things that we're dealing with in the solar industry is the high rate of contractor business failures this year. And, uh, and there's a number of abandoned systems out there, i.e. the contractor that did the original installation is no longer in business, but the homeowner may need some sort of service or repairs down the road. Can you tell us about the ProTrust warranty? How does the ProTrust warranty protect homeowners better than a standard solar panel warranty would, particularly in a situation where the original install contractor has gone out of business? That is a, I'm glad you touched on that. Uh, we're really sorry that uh, there has been the amount of installers that are no longer in business. And yeah, we get, we get stranded homeowners and yeah, I get those phone calls. Good part is, is it is, these panels are covered under the ProTrust warranty. Um, if a homeowner has a system that is covered by the ProTrust warranty and their installer has gone out of business, they can still use a different installer to do the work, warranty claim work on their system um, and is still covered under the ProTrust warranty. So it is transferable and they will be getting the, uh, the compensation for accepted warranty claims. So the ProTrust warranty, really important to have up front. Um, and if you have that, you're covered for the full life of the panel. Great. Well, folks, this has been another look at the REC Alpha Pure RX 470 watt or up to 470 watt module. Uh, by the way, if you haven't seen our top five solar panel lineup for 2024, uh, go back and watch that previous video. We talked some about the REC panel. It's always ranked well in our solar panel comparisons. Um, by the way, folks, if you're getting good value from the videos that you watch on Solar Surge, make sure you get that thumbs up. Uh, and also go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so already. That way, as we have new videos like this coming out, it'll come up on your feed and you can stay up to date with everything. Well, George, anything else the audience should know about the REC modules for 2024? It's exciting products. Uh, it's available. Uh, let's go out and get some and put them up on the rooftops. Sounds good. Well, folks, that does it for today's video. Thanks for spending some more time on the channel. And as always, I'm Joe Ordia here, encouraging you to get prepared and be empowered. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.